Hello, my name is Norris and welcome back to part 4 of SAS and Compass for Web Designers. So let's continue building our project. I'll open up the screen.sas file and let's work from here. First, let's set some variables. I have already made some and let's just run through them really quick. So I picked some colors from the PSD file. So now we have the background color, light font color, dark font color, emphasis, link, and link hover color. And we're going to use 12 pixels as our font size and 20 pixels as our line height. And the final variable is padding set to 10 pixels. And right here on the top, let's keep our sprites. So I'm going to make a new comment and move this import sprite statement over here and call this sprites. And we have a couple of new images in here, amazing.png, branding, and fast. So let's just import them and we will look at them a little later. And as we know, all I need to do is say at import pitch, because that's the folder name, and star.png. Now we are going to use the sprites from the SPR folder, but I want to shorten that a little bit. So I'm going to type at mixin, SPR, a variable of image, and then at include SPR sprite. Now there are no direct benefits of doing this, but I just don't like to type the dash sprite all the time. And this way I can rename any function or mixin that Compass or SAS offers. So if you don't like a particular name of some kind of function or mixin, you can just do something similar to this and then call your own function or mixin afterwards. For example, if I use desaturate a lot, I could say add function and then call this function ds, pass in a and b and now just type add return desaturate. And this way now I can type ds instead of desaturate. But in my case, I just wanted to rename the mixin and let's keep it at that. Now I'm going to scroll down a little. Let's just remove some spaces in here and add in a comment and say that this is general. And now let's use some of the variables. And now we also need to style our links. So I'm just going to paste in some code in here. And now this way we are using most of our variables and if we want to make some changes we need to change only the variables. Now if you paid attention then I have changed all of the text color to variable light font but I want my headings to be in a different color. So now I would type h1, 2, 3 and up until 6 but there's a different way to do this and it's using a compass function. Now the compass function is called headings and then you can either say that you want headings from 2 to 6 or like in our case you can say just all. So I want to style all of my headings and make the text color to be dark font. But if I save that now you can see that I got an error and that's because you can't really call functions as your CSS selectors, at least not like this. If you want to call functions or variables, you can use something SAS calls interpolation. And if you're familiar with Ruby, you are probably already familiar with this. You need to type a dash, then an opening curly brace, and then after the variable or function name, a closing curly brace. And now if I save that, then you can see that Compass runs successfully and if I open up the screen.scss file and scroll down, then right here you can see h1, h2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are set with the proper color. Now while we are on headings, we need to set a proper size for them as well. So wouldn't it be nice if we would have a mix-in that would let us to say set heading size from say 1 to 6 and then the largest size, for example, say 26 pixels, and by how many pixels to subtract each next heading. So let's say two pixels. Now in some cases it would be nice to have something like this, but there just isn't anything. So let's make our own. Let's type at mixin set heading size from 
to base size. And let's use a while loop in here. So first we are going to set a current number. And at the beginning the number is going to be from, but that's going to be changing as the loop goes. Then we need to set a current size, which again at the beginning is the base size. And then we need to increase the two number by one because we are going to use a while loop. And now let's just make a loop and say at while. So while the current number is not equal to the highest number, we are going to run this loop over and over again. So now let's add curly braces and everything inside of these curly braces is going to be our loop. And now we can use the interpolation again. So now I can say H, then a dash, curly braces, and then the current number, curly braces, and then set the font size to be the variable current size. So this selector right here, the first time in the loop it's going to be H1, and then the current number is going to increase by 1, so the next time this is going to be H2, then it's going to be H3, H4, and so on. Now of course, because this is a while loop, we need to increase the number ourselves. So I'm going to set the variable current number to be current number plus one. And now each time the loop runs, variable current number is automatically going to increase itself by one at the end of the loop. And we also need to subtract from the current size. Otherwise we would have exactly the same size headings. So variable current size is current size subtracted by the variable subtract by. So current number is going to be changing in every step of the loop. So at first it's going to be 1, then it's going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And the current size is automatically going to be subtracted every time. So in our example it's going to be first 26, then it's going to be 24, 22, 20, and so on. And now if I save that, you can see Compass run successfully. And now if I open up my screen.css file, right here you can see we have h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, and h6. And the font size is being set just as we want it to be. So let's go back to our SAS file. And one thing we need to do, we need to keep our mixins separate, so I'm just going to cut this all out. And for the moment I'm just going to paste it right here. And I'm going to make a new comment, call it mixins, and paste it like that. Now we are going to style our header, but before we do, let's actually see how much have we done up until now. So you can see this is our link color, we have our font color set, we have a background color, we still have this big long yellow box, but we, we're going to fix that really soon. And all in all, it's starting to look somewhat decent. So let's jump back to our header. And now because we renamed this mixin, we can just call SPR instead of SPR Sprite. And I'm just going to move my Sublime text and Chrome a bit. And here on the right, you can see that we need some adjustments to our header. First off, we need to set the padding to be just a padding of top. And then let's move our logo back up 40 pixels. And now let's view this in a full screen. And let's start styling the navigation. And the first thing I see, we need to style the font. And in SAS, there's another nice shortcut for this. And I can say font, colon, and then a curly brace. And now I can say size is 15 pixels and weight is going to be bold. And now if I save that and let's look at this CSS, then here you can see that SAS automatically compiled them to their proper form. Now we need to style the links in our navigation. And now I'm going to use a SAS function called darken. And with darken, I can darken the color by a certain amount of percent. So in this case, I would like to take the light font color 
and darken it by 5% and use that as my navigation color. And now I can also set my hover color. All I have to do is say ampersand colon hover and set the color to be the variable emphasis of color which in this case is going to be that greenish color. Now right here I see three closing curly braces and I'm not sure that I'm too happy about that. So I'm just going to take the nav element and just move it outside of my header. And this way I'm avoiding any issues and I know that in my HTML I have only one nav element so I don't need to be that specific in my CSS. And I'm just going to add in a comment it says navigation and now if we look at the HTML you can see that inside my nav element I have an ordered list so let's style that as well I have to say UL and all I'm going to do is say add include horizontal list and now I'm going to float the UL to the right and set the padding to be 0 in vertical and the variable of padding on the left and the right side. Now I want to style each individual list item as well. And now I, what I could do here is just hit return a couple of times and then say li and now start typing away. But instead of that I'm just going to stop here and think for one second if there could be other list items outside of this unordered list. And in my case I don't really have any of those so instead of trying to copy the DOM tree I'm just going to say li in here and set the text align to right and add a margin to the right as well. Now if I save that and view that in a the browser then here you can see that the navigation now looks pretty good. So now this heading looks a little out of place so let's go back to our sublime text, scroll back up to our header and remove any margins from our H6. And while we're on it, let's change the color to dark font. Save that and view that in Chrome. And that looks much better. And now one final thing, we need to get rid of these yellow boxes in here. So let's open up sublime text, scroll down and right here we have our pitch. And now let's use the sprite that we imported at the beginning of this lesson. We have to say ampersand dot left div and it's going to include the pitch sprite and we want the amazing image to be in here. And now just copy this down and instead of left this is going to be middle and instead of amazing we're going to have fast and one more time and we need to add in the semicolons as well. So what is this going to translate to? Well from the previous movie we already know that it's going to refer to the class pitch. So it's going to be class pitch and the same element has to be a class of left and then all the div elements inside that class are going to be set with the background of pitch sprite amazing and it is pretty amazing because if I save that and I open up Chrome then here you can see we have all three images and if we do an inspect element on here and click on the background URL then here you can see that they are all imported as a sprite and before we wrap up this lesson I think this space right here is just too narrow so let's open up back sublime text and let's just add in a little padding to the right and now if I save that and look at it in Chrome then you can see that it broke and that's because we can't have padding with this box model so there are two ways to fix this either I say box sizing and then set it to border box and now if I look at it in Chrome you can see that that's fixed or if you don't want to use border box and you're using blank work then you can just say include column the number of columns and then comma and then pass in padding as well and now what this is going to do 
is blank work is going to automatically calculate the width of the column and then it's going to subtract the padding from that and it, now if I save that and if we look at it in Chrome then you can see that this still works and we don't have to use border box so that's it for this lesson and I hope to see you in part 5 of SAS and Compass for web designers